A while back, I released a video on how to convert dates to fiscal quarters and years using Excel formulas. But if you're getting the data with Power Query, then it's more efficient for Excel to classify the dates inside of Power Query before loading it to Excel. Now I'm going to cover both fiscal periods that start at the beginning of a month and those like a 454 calendar that don't. And along the way, I'll be using some techniques you can apply in other areas. So keep an open mind for how you might use these techniques in other solutions. We'll start with fiscal periods that are aligned to the start of a month. In Australia, our financial year runs from 1st of July to 30th of June. So I'll use that example, but you can modify this to suit a different start month. By the way, I should point out that the dates in this example are in day, month, year format. Now my data is in an Excel table. I've just got a list of dates here, but you may have data coming from an external system or another file. Either way, once the data is in Power Query, the process is the same. I've got Microsoft 365, so my Power Query tools are on the Data tab, and then I want From Table Range. If you have Excel 2010 or 2013, then you'll have the dedicated Power Query tab on the ribbon. So I've loaded my data into Power Query, and you can see it's automatically applied a change type step, and it's set the data type for my dates as date time. They're just dates, so I'm going to change that and select date here, and we'll replace the current step. Now I'm going to add a column to get the month number, and then I'll add another one for the year. And now I'm ready to add my fiscal quarter. So we're going to add a column and I want conditional column. This opens up the GUI where I can build an if formula. Let's give the column a name. I'll call it quarter. And then here the column name is if the month is greater than or equal to 10, then that will be Q2. Let's add the next criteria. If the month is greater than or equal to 7, that will be Q1. And if the month is greater than or equal to 4, that will be Q4. And everything else will be Q3. Now it's important that you add these criteria in this order because it will evaluate one by one and as soon as it finds a match, it will stop evaluating. Now I'll click OK and there we have our quarters. Now this is text, so let's change the data type to text. And I'm ready to add my fiscal year. And it's a little more complicated because, for example, for the 2019 slash 2020 year, I want to display it as FY19 slash 20, which is a text string. So I'm going to add a custom column and this will be my fiscal year. And here I can write my if formula. Remember my fiscal year starts on July 1st. So I need to test if the month is less than seven. If it is, then I want to concatenate the text FY and I only want the last two digits of the year. So I'm going to use text end and I need to convert the year number to text. So I'm going to use number two text and I want the year column. I'm converting that to text, but I need to subtract one. Remember, I want the previous year slash the current year. So the first year I want is the previous year. So year minus one close my number two text, and then I just want the last two digits of that year, close text end, and I want to concatenate forward slash, and then I can grab the second year. So we're just going to repeat this text end number two text, and I want the year again, but just the last two digits. So this is going to concatenate FY to the previous year and the current year where the month number is less than seven. So now all I need to do is write else and complete the formula for those months that are greater than seven. So let's just copy this right up to the FY and I'll paste it below. So here, instead of minus one, we just want the current year because these are for months that are greater than seven. And this one here, we want to add one. And that's it. Click OK. And now we have our fiscal year. I can change the data type to text and I'm ready to close and load. Now keep in mind that you can easily modify this formula to suit different fiscal year start dates. 
For example, I can go in and edit the formula. If my year starts in September, then I'd change that to a nine. So it's fairly easy to modify. So let's close and load. And we'll pop it there beside the table. Now, if you find you have performance issues with the conditional column for the quarters, another way is to specify a list of quarter dates, one for each month. So let's go back into Power Query and I'll make a copy of this query. We'll call this one Table 1 Index and let's remove all of the steps until the end. I'll collapse this. So what I want to do here is open the advanced editor and I'm going to add my list. I'll call it quarters and quarters equals and all I need to do is list the quarter numbers one for each month. So January will be three, February will be three, March will be quarter three and then April, May and June will be quarter four. July, August and September a quarter one and October, November and December a quarter two. So that's my list. Add a comma. Click done. And now you'll see in the applied steps pane I have my list of quarters that I can use and I can index that list. So let's add a column, custom column. We'll call it fiscal quarter and in here I can reference my list. It's a list, so I open it with a curly brace. Now what I want to do is return one of the values from that list. And the value I want returned is the month number. So all I need to do is extract the month from the date, which we do with the date month function. Close parentheses on date month. Now because Power Query indexes from zero, I need to subtract one from the month number. And this will return zero for January, which will return the first value from the quarters list and so on. So close my list with the curly brace, click OK. And there I have my dates classified into my fiscal quarters. Now, if we look at the formula bar, you can see the formula I just entered and I can double click to select quarters and then move my mouse away and then hover over it again. And I get a tooltip showing the items in the quarters list. If we take the date on the fourth row, which is the 1st of April, the date month function returns the month number, which is four. And then I take one away to return three. So in this case, Power Query returns the item from the quarters list at index number three. But remember, Power Query indexes from zero. So the quarter number at index number three is quarter four. And keep in mind, you could also use this technique with a list of text. But what if you want to see them with a Q prefixing the quarter number? Well, we can go back in and modify this. So we'll add a Q and concatenate that to the result. But I can't concatenate text and a number, which is what is being returned by this section of my formula. So let's convert this into text. We'll just wrap it in the text.from function. And click OK. And we're done. I can change this to a text data type and I'm ready to close and load. So let's place it beside the other table. Now keep in mind that if you wanted fiscal month numbers, you could use the same technique. And a big thanks to Phil for this. It was his idea. If your company's fiscal period doesn't start on the first day of the month, or you use a 454 calendar, then you need to use a lookup table. You can see here my lookup table lists the start and end date of each quarter, and it has a column for the fiscal quarter and year for each period. I'll load both tables into Power Query. Let's change this to a date data type. And I'll go back and grab the other table. I'm going to load this just as a connection and we'll load this one from table range. And again, let's change the data type to just date. So the way we achieve this is by merging the two tables. So I'm going to go combine and then I'm going to merge queries as new. That will just create a new query for me. 
and I've got my 454 periods and then I want table 2, that's my list of dates. And it's these two columns here that are the columns that are related. And down here I want a full outer join which is going to bring in all rows from both tables. And we'll click OK and we'll see what we get. Let's collapse that down. So this here is my table of dates. Let's expand that. I don't need the original column name. So we've got a list of dates. Let's bring that over to the left. And then we've got our quarter start. Next, I need to generate a column that has a date on every row. So I'm going to add a conditional column that says if the date equals null, meaning if the date column is empty, then I'm going to grab the date from the quarter start. Otherwise, I'll grab the date from the date column. It doesn't matter what this column's called because I'm going to delete it in the end. So I'll click OK. There's my dates. Now I can sort my data in ascending order. And if we scroll back across, you can see now I have the quarter start at the top of each set of dates. All I need to do is select these four columns and transform tab and fill down. And now each row that contains a date has the quarter start, quarter end, fiscal quarter and fiscal year. I don't need these rows that have nulls, so let's filter them out. And I can get rid of this custom column, it's done its job, I'll just press delete. Let's give this query a name, call it 454 calendar. And just keep in mind that this is the same technique if you have fiscal periods that don't start at the beginning of a month. I've just used this example as the 454 calendar. You would create your own calendar table that suited your fiscal periods. So I'm ready to close and load. We'll go close and load to I'll create a connection because remember I loaded three tables and I only want to output one of them, which is this last one here. So we'll right click and change the load to and we'll pop it in a table. If you wanted the fiscal quarter to be prefixed with a Q, you just change it there in your lookup table. As you can see, it's fairly easy to classify your dates into fiscal periods using Power Query. And the bonus is it's more efficient for Excel to perform these calculations in Power Query as opposed to formulas in the worksheet. I hope you found this technique useful. You can download the Excel file for this lesson from the link here. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful? Thanks for watching.